Cool. So I wanted to meet with all of you guys today uh, for a couple different reasons, but before I get into that, real quick, I wanted to thank um, our hosts and our sponsors today. So Christy and Pete Moran with uh, American Eagle Mortgage, thanks for having us today. We appreciate the food, the hospitality, the conference room. Uh, Co-host Brad Bryant, Bryant Title and Escrow in the back there, also known as uh, Social Chairman, is that what it is? Social yes. Chairman, so yes. event planner, coordinator. <laughs> Cool, so I'll go ahead and get started. So basically, what's it, the binder in front of you is called, I call it the 90 Day Mastery Bootcamp. So what that is, it's basically your playbook to becoming a successful real estate agent. There's a lot, obviously, you guys have been with us for roughly, I, I try to get everybody that's joined us within the last 90 to 120 days. So you've gotten a taste of what it's like to get full blown into the industry. Now there's a lot of things that you haven't seen yet, which is what this binder is for. It's, it's meant to be the, the glue in between the career, the missing pieces that you feel you may have right now. So session one, which is what I wanted to go over today, is mostly about goal setting, uh, controlling your mind and controlling your world. So a lot of people set, you know, they come in when I interview them and I ask them, what are your goals, right? Like, why are you getting into the industry? Why are you quitting your job and doing this? And a lot of people kind of give me like a, a very superficial answer, like I want to make a hundred grand, 200 grand, I want to make a million bucks, which sounds great in theory and I like the ambition, but it's not enough for you to say, I want to close 20 deals this year. It's not enough for you to say, I want to make 200 grand this year. There has to be an attachment in there, right? There has to be, the mind has to align with your goal. Otherwise you, you know, like New Year's re resolutions, like by the, by the second week, the third week of January, everybody's blowing it out the window. They stop going to the gym, they start eating shitty again. So. <laughs> That, that's kind of why there's, there needs to be an alignment with your mind. So that's kind of what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. So you guys can follow along. The program is meant to be a game changer for you, but it's 100% up to you to allow that experience to happen, right? So I can teach you, I can give you all the resources, I can give you all the tech, I can give you leads, I can't give you the will to do it, right? That needs to come from you guys. So there's a couple things that I ask from you during this training process. and. Just to back up a little bit, the training is gonna happen in the same schedule that the previous training was happening, right? So every Tuesday and Thursday from 11 to 12.30, Wednesday we'll leave for technology training and general Q&A. So what I ask for you is to cut out any other self-development that you may have going on right now. I don't think you guys have any coaches or any other training programs that you're following right now, but in the event that you do, let's just cut it off for the next 90 days so we can fully dive into this, okay? Um, show up to every training session, obviously. I mean, it, it's all about commitment. I have a, a big rule that I always follow. I call it the three C's. It's commitment, con consistency, and courage. Okay, so commitment is show up, right? Get to class on time, be here when I ask you to be here. If you cannot, I understand life happens. I've taken the liberty of backing all of this up onto Ways by Waterfront, which I'll show you at the end, how you can access the training. And there's actually live recorded sessions, okay? Um, and then commit to doing the work. 10% of, of success is information, 90% is action, right? So just commit to doing your work. There's a couple quotes in the bottom that align with that. We have a Facebook group, I think. Everybody in this room should be a part of it. If you're not, email me, Ryan, Alicia, or Matthew, and we will get you in that Facebook group, okay? Uh, make sure you're checking that daily. I drop little golden nuggets in there probably every week. The last one was that seller's guide. I hope everybody got a chance to look at that. Uh, keep in mind that everybody in that group is in a different level, right? So you might have some experienced agents that have been with us for 10 years. They're asking really complex questions. Don't worry about it, right? You can ask about what you think is a dumb question. There's no such thing. I'm happy to answer that. If you don't want to ask in a group setting, you can ask me or your mentors directly, okay? Uh, number five, you have to let us know how to help you, right? I don't know what I don't know. The mentors don't know what they don't know. So if you're having difficulties, if you're having problems with the training course, with your career, with anything that has to do with real estate and waterfront, you have to let us know, okay? We're here to help. So just a, a general structure for the program, you're following along, it's the second part of this page. It's three weekly hours for the training sessions, so you're gonna have two one and a half hour sessions, okay? Uh, I'd like for you to set out an, an hour immediately after the training to reflect on what we went over and start implementing some of the action strategies that I put in there for you. Uh, your daily hour per hour, and, and yes, that's every day, including Friday, Saturday, and Sunday you should be prospecting or building your business. That's what the hour of power, if you guys have seen some of the Tom Ferry training or when we do our cold call sessions, that's an hour because it's an hour of concentrated prospecting, building your business. That's why we call it an hour of power. So make sure you're doing that every single day if possible. 
uh, daily check on the Facebook group. I went over that. So that roughly equates to about 20 hours a week that you're building your business, that you're working on furthering your career along and hitting your goals, right? So that's less than a part-time job. The rest of the time you can spend going on appointments, holding open houses, or doing whatever you want. As long as you're committing the 20 hours a week that it takes to really make this program successful, you're gonna see the results from it, okay? Um, of course, in Ways by Waterfront, you get a lifetime access, as long as you're a real estate agent with us, to all of this, all the, uh, the training course, so all the videos that I'm gonna put in there. Uh, and the reason why I did that is because uh, NASA, and I showed a little study there, uh, they did a study that we only retain about 10% of the information that's given to us. So by the end of this training program today, you're really gonna remember only about 10% of the things that I said. So <laughs> you, <laughs> you may wanna go back on the website, rewatch the video. There's a, this program, I can't take all the credit for it. I mirrored it from uh, somebody whose name is Joshua Smith. He's a high performing real estate broker out in Arizona. He runs his own team. They do about $450 million a year in sales, and it's like seven people, which is crazy. So he developed this training program, which I bought, uh, and then I tailored it to Waterfront Realty and passed it on to you guys. So this is what I used to become successful in the industry. This is what people like Brad Means, Todd Colmer, Samantha Rowe, uh, some of our older agents like Tom and Sue Wildleg, Geo Thornhill, they use some of these core values and some of these messages in this training to build their careers, right? And they're all, 15 million dollar a year plus producers, okay? So that's on Ways by Waterfront. By the end of this year, I want you guys to be unconsciously confident about what is in this training program. So it means you should be operating unconsciously. This should be almost like on automatic. When you go on a listing appointment, you don't even know what you're saying anymore because you're so used to saying it, right? It's just, it, it's, it becomes just basically like such second nature, okay? Um, some of these sessions you may find more powerful than other, others. It really depends on your own personal level of self-development. As you guys know, I'm really big in the self-development. I have three coaches, including a personal trainer. I have a, a business coach, and I have a, uh, some other things that I do with coaching because I wanna always develop myself. I wanna always take it to the next level. And you guys should take some, some of that too and implement it into your own life, okay? So everybody's in a different level. Uh, as far as each course, you may find something more informative or more interesting than others. Like I said, this first session is going to be all about mindset, goal setting, and having control of your mind, right? But next week, we may talk about tracking and systems. The week after that, we may talk about listing presentations. And the next week, we may talk about buyer consultations, right? Some of you guys are really experienced the listing presentations, and I know that from going to listing appointments with you guys. Still come to the training, still go through the notions, because you may find things in there that you can tweak and make your presentation even better, right? Um, so the, uh, one of the things that's it's in, at the bottom, it's in red, is there's extremely diff, uh, dangerous mindset alert. When people say, I already know this, right? Or uh, I've been there, done that, or you know, I'm, I'm old enough to know, but I don't care, right? So that's extremely uh, dangerous mindset for you to be in, right? So one of the scariest places you allow yourself to go, if you find yourself having one of those thoughts, ask yourself, if I know it, why am I not doing it, right? If you know you're supposed to make your calls every day, why are you not doing it? And again, it's gonna align with your goals in the bottom. Uh, next page. To become more successful, we, we must learn to ask better questions. So the importance of implementation, we all have access to the same information today. What matters the most is your speed to learn and implement and adapt. So obviously, this business is all about being able to adapt. You, we see big players coming into our market like Zillow, like Redfin, we have companies like Amazon buying uh, grocery stores, right? So you can see how the industry is kind of, in, in general, the economy is changing to adaptability. Everything's happening much faster than it did 10, 15, 20 years ago. So your ability to adapt and implement new technology, implement new strategies, is gonna be key to you being successful in this industry. So I want you to become an implementation machine during this training. Uh, I found the reason why this is a 90 day training program, because it takes about 90 days to build a habit of consistently doing something. So. If you say, I'm gonna start going to the gym four times a week, every single week, it's gonna take you 90 days to actually make that a habit and not have to stress through it and you know worry about getting up in the morning or getting lazy about going to the gym, right? Next page. Um, so the, my, my three months of creating a successful real estate business is you must know the game, the real estate game, and master it, and we'll go over that in a second. You must have a system in place for everything, and we're always wearing three hats. We have a realtor hat, we have our entrepreneur hat and we have our consumer hat. So as a realtor, we go to neighbor, we go, to, go through our licensing courses, you come to my training, you learn how to be a real estate agent. The entrepreneur in you is adaptability, it's thinking outside the box, it's being resourceful, you know, what, how can I do this better? How can I be more efficient with the things that I do within my business? 
how can I deliver a better customer experience to my clients, right? How can I get more business? That's a very entrepreneurial mindset to have. Uh, and then last but not least is consumer. I find it really funny that I actually hang on to a lot of the junk mail that I get at home because I like seeing what people are doing differently as far as their advertising goes. So I, I always challenge people, like the, the vendors that send me mail, which one am I actually gonna open or look at? So half of them go in the trash and then they trick me because one of them came in like a FedEx looking package. I'm like, ooh, what's this? And I open it, it's advertisement. And they got me. So I'm like, that's really cool. I wanna learn how to build my business the same way to trick other people in opening my material or making it easier for them for me to get in front of them, right? So that's the consumer mindset. The real estate game at the bottom, that's a sales funnel. Every single business in the world has a sales funnel, whether you realize it or not, especially real estate. So the top level of the funnel, the thickest part, like an oil funnel, right, is your activities, your lead generating activities, your calls, your open houses, your text prospecting, your videos, whatever you're doing to generate your business, that's the top funnel. Number two is leads. So you're doing hosting an open house, right? You get 10 people to show up. Those 10 people are your leads. Number three is you set up an appointment. So if those 10 people that came in, you got five people's contact information and three of them wanted to set up an appointment or you're actually able to conduct an appointment right there and then and there at the open house, right? That's the next one is appointment conduction. And then the C becomes contract or a client under contract. So for a buyer, you could be submitting offers for somebody, right? Or you could put them under a buyer broker agreement, which I'll go over in later training sessions. And then the bottom becomes the execution and obviously the sale. Everything happens in this funnel. There's no way around that. From inception all the way to the end. So always know that wherever you have your leads, if you have 100 leads, you should know where every single one of them in that funnel is, okay? So, um, uh, the uh, again, with the 90-day program and creating your own playbook, so I give this to you and I call it a playbook uh, because I designed it, right? But by the end of this program, I want you to be able to create your own playbook and, and have your own systems and your own processes that are making you highly successful, right? So some important things to know is systems manage us along with our people. So any system that you have in place, your system for taking on a buyer lead, your system for taking on a seller lead, that manages us and it manages everybody else that works with us. Uh, you have to create the right systems in order to manage yourself, obviously, and your clients as well. If you don't have a system in place, you'll never be able to reproduce your income. You'll never have predictable income. One of the hardest things when you get into the real estate industry, especially those of you that come from a nine to five, from an hourly paying job or a salary where you get paid every two weeks or a month, is that there's no predictability to what you're gonna make this month compared to next. But there actually, there is. When you become, when you have a system and you put it in place and you put it in your business, if you know, if I know that it takes 40 conversations with my clients to have one sale, then that's predictability, right? Uh, and that's really what it breaks down to be. It's 40 conversations equals a sale. Some of you may be 60, some of you may be 30, but your eventual goal is to get that number as low as possible. So make it a goal to have 40 conversations with people per per month. I mean, I did I did 30 a month and I was able to be, I did okay when I was selling. So I think if you guys are able to do 30 to 40, you'll do just fine. That's what this program is based out of, right? Um, and then I, obviously what I just said, without systems, you really can never create a truly successful business. You'll get into the up and down syndrome that I see every agent go through where they're really busy for like three months. They're just slinging it, they're killing deals. Uh, they're picking up listings left and right. They're having multiple closings in one week. And then they get to July and they have nothing. And then they have no pendings. And then they have no closings for 90 days. And then they go broke, right? And then they're struggling, they're freaking out. And so it's a constant, like roller coaster, right? Of not only <laughs> your bank account, but also your emotions as well. So it takes a big toll on people. And trust me, I went through that and I felt in that year, I felt like I aged 10 years. I'm only 27, I look like I'm 40. And that's because of that. <laughs> um, four things to create a successful business your process, your systems that I talked about, knowing your numbers and your people, right? So a lot of, a lot of times people say, well, the, the most important thing is people in your business. And it's true, you have to take care of your clients. But if you don't have a process and a system and you don't know your numbers, then you'll never be able to hit as many people as you want to. So that's why ask Brian and Alicia and now Matthew how much I ask them for their numbers. Every single day they hate me. I'm texting them at like 11.59 at night. I'm like, I don't have your numbers yet. And they're just, they hate me. I know they do. But there's, there's a method to the madness, I promise you. Um, at some point you start feeling really overwhelmed. I had agents come to me and it's like, dude, this is like drinking water out of a firehouse. I mean, this is so much. I really don't know where to even start. So there's a cool little analogy I use there is how do you eat an, an, eat an elephant? You do it one bite at a time. So right, you take this training one bite at a time. You go to each neighbor class one bite at a time. You make one call and you make the next and then you make the next. 
Stop thinking about all the calls you need to make this month and just think about what you can do today. A lot of people grossly overestimate what they can do in a week, but they underestimate what they can do in an entire year, right? Because of that methodology, because they get overwhelmed and they don't want to do anything, right? It's like paralysis by analysis. Um, there's a significant learning curve in establishing your real estate business, not only from an educational perspective, but also from a, from a business owner's perspective, right? So I put there at the bottom, you're the captain of your own ship, so you have to align your goals to your progression in this course, and your attention to this content will highly increase. So what I mean by that is, all of you guys are 1099, right? You're all, you're not my employees, you're business owners, you're running your own show, right? You're, I'm not your boss, maybe I'm your leader, depending on how you look at me, or maybe I'm just a kid standing up here telling you what to do, right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, you're running your own shit. So what does that mean is when you wake up in the morning and you have your goals set out for the day or your to-do list set up for the day, if you don't do it, I'm not gonna get mad at you, Jack's not gonna get mad at you, Matt's not gonna get mad at you. We care, we want you to hit your goals, but at the end of the day, it's all up to you. You're running your own show. So the, the biggest thing, the biggest hurdle for people to understand is that you become a business owner without knowing it or not, you're an entrepreneur now. That's why this is the entrepreneur playbook. You're not an employee, you're not just a real estate agent, you're not a realtor you're an entrepreneur, so it's up to you to make this business work, right? Um, so the next page talks about the life design process for success, and all these steps I'm gonna go through you within the next 90 days. Step number one is complete your lifetime, lifetime study calculation document, uh, GSD, GSD mode uh, model, your should versus must list, your yearly business plan, daily performance tracker, all the things that I'm gonna go over within this session and the next one, okay? So in the next step, it's step number one, the creating of success. You have to get clarity on what you want uh, or start with what you don't want. So a lot of people, they don't want to make their calls, so they leave it towards the last thing that they do at the end of the day, or they don't want to do their, their paperwork, they don't want to write their deals for whatever reason, they don't want to manage their dot loop, put something in the MLS, the redundant activities that we do. We don't want to do them. I always, as hard as it is, I get up really early and I do a little meditation, I reflect a little bit, a little development for myself. And then I get right after the things that I don't want to do, like answer everybody's email that I got the day before, like 250 emails that I have to get back and deal with all the fires that we have to put out, right? That really sucks, but I do it first thing in the morning because then I get past them. Like, Fuck yeah, you know, I just got through the hardest part of my day. Everything should be golden from now on. It doesn't always work out that way, but <laughs> at least I have that mindset. So I'm going into the day uh, looking at things from the right perspective, right? Um, how do you know if you're making the right or the wrong decisions if you don't have clarity on what you want? If you don't know exactly what you want, if I went around this room and I asked each and every single one of you what your goal is, would you be able to tell me within five seconds or would you have to think about it, right? If you have to think about it, that's a problem because you don't have clarity about what you want out of your life, what you want out of this training, what do you want out of Waterfront, what do you want out of why the hell did you get your real estate license, right? You need to have clarity every single day on what it is that you want. So how do you get clarity? I have a, a process that I follow that works extremely well for me and it's worked for many others within Waterfront mm -hmm. outside of that. So here's the personal experience. If you go back, this is called a lifetime study, right? So I'm gonna ask all of you guys to fill this out right now. It may seem a little like morbid, right? You're, you're figuring out how much time you have left in your life. Uh, <laughs> but, but honestly, I mean, it's gonna give you a lot of clarity. It's gonna put you in a mindset to where you know exactly how much time you have left to make an impact in this life. Otherwise, you're wasting time, right? So 84, number one, 84 is the average lifespan for a human these days, okay? You may live longer than that, I hope, or you know, you may live shorter, it's just reality, right? So what's your current age? Write that down right there, 27, 30, 50, 60, whatever it is, okay? I'll wait for that. So now take line one and times it by 12. Use your calculator. There's an example at the bottom in case you guys get lost. The reason why you're times in it by 12 because there's 12 months in a year, right? So the example says I'm 35 years old. So 84 minus 35 is 49. 49 times 12 is 588, okay? So again, your age times 12. Number three, line two minus the months you've been current at your current age. So again, if you look at this example, it's October 15th, right? So however many months you've been, 27, 30, you, uh, you add that right on there. I'm sorry, you minus that from there, excuse me. Everybody still with me? Yes, no, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's with you. <laughs> so again, look at the example if you get lost. Total months minus the months that I've been alive this year. 
579. So October, it's the 10th month. It's not a complete month. So you go nine months plus 15 days. So that's nine right there. Nine minus 588 is 579. So whatever answer you just came up with, let's, I'm just going to use the example. I have 579 months left if I'm blessed to live the average age of an average human being uh, to make a difference in my life, right? So that should put something into perspective for you. So I did the study. I'm 27. I did it. And every day when I get up in the morning, I say I have 672 months left. I have 671 months left. And slowly but surely, that it keeps getting lower and lower and lower. This year has gone by so fast. Think about, well, it's almost September. That's crazy. I was just, we were just celebrating New Year's. We were just celebrating the season. Like everybody was crazy, it was busy. Um, the Super Bowl just happened, but that was six months ago, right? So time goes by, especially as you get older, really, really fast. So every day when I wake up, I, I know exactly how many months I have left on Earth to make the impact that I want to make, right? So that's a really powerful study. That should give you some clarity, at least on the time frame that you have to make your goals happen, okay? So next page talks about everybody, did everybody get through that? I want to make sure I'm not jumping in front of everybody. Rafa, you're good? Yeah, yeah we're good. Okay, <laughs> this, and this is part of your, <laughs> so at the end of every session, you're gonna have homework, homework for like college and high school, um, and, and this is part of the homework, right? Uh, the, the lifetime study is going to be part of your homework in case you didn't finish it just now. Um, the ultimate scoreboard. So we're all going to have an internal conversation on our deathbed and ask ourselves, what did I do with this gift called life? Did I do something amazing or did I waste it and there's no time left for me to do anything about it? So I read a study once that talked about people that work at, um, at hospices. I know we're talking about a lot of morbid stuff right now, but I guess there's a process this, I promise you. So they work at hospices and, and they asked them, you know, what is that like talking to those people that they know that they may be dying in the next hour? You know, what is it that they say? What are some of the conversations that you're having with these people? And 99% of the people that are on that deathbed in the hospice, they say, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have talked to my daughter more. I wish I would have talked to my dad more. I wish I would have done this with my family. I wish I would have made a better impact on everybody else's life. I wish I would have done something, right? So if you think about yourself right now, fast forward however many years until you're on your deathbed, do you really want to have things that you're saying, like, I wish I would have done this? Or do you want to be able to say, man, I lived a really fulfilled life. I touched a lot of people's life. Uh, I gave all my love to my friends and family. I gave all my love to my kids. I passed on a good legacy for the next round of my lifeline, right, for my lifeblood. Um, that's what I want to be able to say. That's what everybody in this room would should be should want to say, right? That you want to pass on a good legacy. So that's a scoreboard for me, and is knowing that and asking myself that question. So again, if we if we take that lifetime study, what must happen in X amount of months that I have left for me to answer the ultimate scoreboard question in the way that I want to answer? What what must happen to create actual fulfillment in my life? That's how you guys should be thinking about this every day. And I know you guys are here to be real estate agents and make a ton of money. But I, I will urge you that if you don't set up this foundation correctly, you won't make a lot of money or you'll be busting your ass 100 hours a week to make okay money, to make six figures. What you want to do is work part-time hours to make a million bucks a year. That's somebody that's really dialed in. You guys, I'll use a quick example. You know, Most of you here know Geo Thornhill, who's our top agent. He closes about 40 million a year in real estate by himself. He doesn't have a team, he's just an assistant. But he's so dialed into this process I really only see him about 18 hours a week in the office. And the rest of the time he's out having a good time. He just opened up a restaurant. He has plenty of time with his kids. He was in Guatemala or something for three weeks. I mean, the dude has time to do anything and he makes well over seven figures a year because he has a process dialed in. And I talked to him, you know, we have some real conversations and he does it because he wants to spend time with his family. He wants to be with his kids. That's the most important thing in his life. So you should be dialed in the same way that he is, I hope. Okay, so if we go to the next page, the, the model is what is the outcome that I want? What are the problems and obstacles in my way? And what are the must-do action steps to eliminate the problems and obstacles to make your outcome a reality? So what I mean by that is, if you are generally a, a nervous person to pitch or to sell, to, to sell something, right, or to get on the phone and make a cold call, if you don't like doing that, then you can identify that as a problem or an obstacle getting in the way, right? So again, if you go back and you're doing your lifetime study and your big whys and why you're doing this and your goals and what you want to be able to do, and at the end of the day, you get hung up on a phone call to a stranger that doesn't give two shits about you, <laughs> right? There's a problem with that. There's a huge problem with that. Why do you care? It's just, it's another dial that you have to make towards your progression. So that's a good example for you guys to use. It'll be part of your homework. It'll make sense here in a minute. 
Um, and I want you to apply that, that mindset, that three-step mindset to every area of your life. So not only the business that you have here with Waterfront Realty Group, I wanted to, uh, you apply it to your health. A lot of us here are really healthy. A lot of us like me could shed a couple pounds. So apply that if you need to lose some weight, if you want to get in shape, if you want to eat better. Apply it to your marriage if you're married or if you have a significant other. You know, how can I be more committed to my relationship with my significant other? And if you have kids or dependents on you, apply it to them too. You can apply this model every single step in your life, okay? Um, I want to make a quick note, and I put it at the bottom as a footnote. A lot of people talk about balance, having a balanced life, having time for work, having time for kids, having time for this, having time for that, going on vacation. <laughs> Uh, it, it, and I agree with this 100% in life, there's really no such thing as, as balance. It's all life, right? So it's critical to focus on all of it. You can't, affect, you can't affect on one area without affecting the other. It all works synergetically. It's all in tandem. So there's really no, no balance, especially as an entrepreneur. Maybe if you had a nine to five, the balance is you're only working 40 hours a week and then when you clock out, you're done with that job and you don't hear about it until Monday, right? Or the next day. Uh, but in, in the business that we're in, that doesn't happen, right? So it becomes uh, like a mesh posture of everything that we're doing at the same time. So there is no work-life balance for us. It's all just life. Um, and that's a, a, an important point that I, I like that he said, and I agree with 100%, okay? Uh, next page, again, it goes, uh, talks about the outcomes that I want, the problems and obstacles, what must happen for me to overcome those things. Um, and if you use the GSE model on your yearly outcomes, and then you can break them down in the 90 day sprints, right? So based on my lifetime study, I have X amount of months left. What is my outcome that must happen, happen in this aspect of my life to get one step closer to making that reality in the next 90 days or 12 months or whatever your goal is, right? Um, a life of clarity creates simplicity. A life that lacks clarity creates complication and chaos. So when you're clear about your goals and what you wanna do and what needs to happen, there's no questions about what needs to happen, right? It's not chaos, you're not all over the place, you have complete clarity on what you wanna do, okay? Uh, next page is what must happen between then, now and then to create the life that you know you want and then the life that you deserve, right? So there's some quick bullet points there. Wake the focus up, right? So get focused on your business, get focused, get intentional about what you wanna do. Hmm. Success is an elimination, not addition, so what can you remove from your day-to-day -day life? Where are you wasting the most time? What can you delete Facebook from your phone? Yeah, you don't need it on your phone. It's on your computer. Why do you need it on your phone, right? That's, I, waste, I wasted a lot of time having Facebook on my phone, and I know we need it for business, but you know that we don't use it for business 90% of the time, right? We're just catching up on the latest cat video or meme. Um, <laughs> who or what is prohibiting you from taking the necessary action steps to create the life that you truly deserve? So what is prohibiting you? Maybe it's a toxic relationship in your life, friends that you shouldn't have, people that you shouldn't be hanging out with, even your closest relationships, do you need to eliminate those in order to hit your goals and hit the outcomes that you wanna hit, right? Do you have people in your life telling you that you need breaks, do you, that you work too much, that you're too driven? If so, don't walk, but run away from those people. And, and, and trust me, guys, I take it on a personal note, my mom was always like, yo, you're working way too hard, you're doing too much, you're, you know, when I took, and I, when I was, you know, give you a little personal taste when I was, just running my own team, right? Ex exclusively selling real estate. I was working okay hours, like 35 to 40, kind of a, a normal job, right? So that was, I was dialed in more, making a lot of money, me, myself and my partner, everything was good. When I decided to take the next step, because my ultimate vision was to create a, a brand, an empire, right? And come into Waterfront and partner up with Jack, my hours doubled and my pay decreased by 99%. I mean, it, it was the most shocking thing I've ever done in my life. And it was real hard at first, right? So. My, during this process, right, my mom's like, you're insane. My friends were like, dude, what are you doing? It, it was, there was a lot of negativity getting thrown at me from some of the closest people in my life. And I had to, guys, back up. I know what I'm doing. I, I know what I want. I have clarity on my goals. I, I know exactly what I want in life and the impact that I want to make. So this is why I'm doing this. So it's almost like you have to have that conversation with a lot of people that are closest to you so they understand exactly what you're trying to do, okay? Um, there's a cool, if you guys know who uh, Gary Vanderstruck is at the bottom, there's a cool quote by him too. I try to throw in the, as much motivational stuff as I can on the first one. This whole course isn't about, you know, drink the Kool-Aid, rah, 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 motivational stuff. But again, the foundation, you need to really get clarity on your mindset, okay? Clarity on one, commit to making everything a reality, eliminate everything that does not align with what you want, and work your ass off every single day to make it a reality. There's, there's, that's your measure, is working your ass off. And you're not overworked, you're just unfocused. A lot of people say I'm busting my ass. I'm like, dude, you're just not focused on what you want, okay? 
you wouldn't be saying that if you were focused, you have your systems dialed in, you're just, it's just part of your journey to get to exactly where you want to be. Next page, uh, do you want more out of life? Then you must commit to doing and becoming more. You're not born the person that you are, you are the person you choose to be based on your disciplines and, and you choose to practice the habits you've chosen to create, right? So you're not a product of your circumstances, right? You create your own circumstances. I grew up poor in another country. I moved here 18 years ago, I didn't speak English. So everything in that notion said that I should have not been successful, right? I'm not saying I am super successful, but I think I'm doing okay. Apply that to your same metrics. It, it doesn't matter where you came from, who's in your life, and your outcomes. You can always make things different. You can always change who you are. I, I don't believe that people can ever change. I've seen people. I've witnessed a lot of the a lot of agents here take huge risks and become completely different people. A lot of close friends. And Brad means I've known since I was in fourth grade, since he was my first friend that I had when I moved to the States from Chile, okay, I'm from South America. Um, and, and he, in, in the maturation of his process as we move forward in life, he's become a completely different person and I, so have I from where we were six years ago, even six months ago, we're completely different because we're consistently evolving and we made a commitment to become better and we're focused on our, and, and we're, we're clear on what we want every single day, okay? Um, the next slide says, you may say, if Joshua is the name of the guy, Joshua, I just, I don't care about being rich like you do or being successful like you are. I just want to be comfortable. Okay. And there's no judgment in that. And I, I, I coincide with this. If you guys don't want to make a shit ton of money, that's fine. I don't, I, that's not what I'm here. I'm here to make you guys successful in your own right. So whatever it means to you individually to be successful, there's no adjustment. You must, you must live your own life and choose your own path. Um, and then he shares why the, the statement above. Uh, he doesn't like and why you feel that, or I'm sorry, he feels that you should want to become rich. So if you scroll down, the economy has changed. There's some bullet points there that we're witnessing, like I said earlier, the de-industrialization of the economy. The middle class was created during the Industrial Revolution, and now it's being torn apart. So the middle class is getting pressed down every single day. They're actually, it's actually becoming the new broke, is being the middle class. There's a big gap between the middle class and millionaires these days because it's people that have chosen to advance in their life and the ones that are okay staying right where they are, right? They're okay with not being rich or not being super successful. Uh, and again, I use, I, I use the example of Amazon buying uh, Whole Foods, right? Well, like, that does, doesn't make any sense. Amazon is an e-commerce site that sells product online. Whole Foods is a brick and mortar location that sells groceries. Like, what does that make any sense, right? That's the in industrialization because they're doing something, they're, they're so far ahead, they're evolving so much that in their business model, that makes a lot of sense. And a lot, 99% of us don't see it right now, but I'm sure in the next year to three years, it's gonna, they're probably gonna be drop shipping groceries right to your doorstep and all it'll drop. And I guarantee you it's gonna happen. Um, I'm not gonna read all of this, but you, it's good for you to be aware that 98% of the people by the age of 65 are reliant on somebody else to take care of. 98% of every single human on earth is reliant after the age of 65 to take care of somebody else taking care of them. That's, I don't even know how that stat's true, but it is. 74% uh, of people are overweight, 50% are obese, 80% hate their jobs, 84% of households make less than 100K per year. That's both incomes, husband and wife, make less than 100K a year. 76% of them paycheck to take paycheck. 62% don't have a thousand bucks in their savings. I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. The worst one is 50% of Americans do not have 400 bucks. 400 bucks, 50% of us. The list goes on and on and on. So money does matter. It matters every single day. And when people say money doesn't equal happiness, <laughs> I've seen somebody that says, have you ever seen a guy in a Ferrari crying, right? <laughs> I love that quote, but oh, it's true. I mean, you can get fulfillment from other things in your life, from the relationships, from your family, from your husband and wife, but money matters, right? Money moves our economy forward. It moves you forward. So you should make it, intentionally make it your goal to make as much money as possible, right? Uh, next slide. Good enough, right? Our new economy is good enough, also known as average. You're going to be extinct, extinct in the next three years. Good equals scraping by, so that's like the middle class that we were talking about. And greatness is now thriving, so you have to thrive in order to be great. So how do you overcome not taking action, your fear of rejection, and your fear of call reluctance? Like I was telling you earlier, how do you overcome those things that you just don't want to do on a daily basis? You don't want to make that dial. You don't want to make that cold call. You don't want to 
go on that listing appointment. You don't want to get rejected. You don't want somebody to tell you no over the phone, especially in our cold call sessions. We're in a live group and people are like, ah, I don't want to get rejected in front of these guys. I'd rather go make a call by myself, right? It's, it's real. I understand that. I went through that too. The, the number one way to overcome it is to understand that fear exists. Everybody feels it. And if, if you don't, it only means that you're living life too safe. So you should want to feel fear. I feel fear every day. I'm, I'm scared right now sitting in front of you guys. Judging the shit out of me. <laughs> no, no, but no, honestly, I mean, I do things per, like consciously and on purpose every single day to make myself uncomfortable and be scared because that's the only process of growth. It, it ha only happens outside of my comfort zone. I'm naturally an introvert, okay? So I don't like huge crowds. I'm not a big partier. If I had it my way, I'd be in my office locked up just making little PDFs like this every single day and just hanging out by myself. Right? But I know that that lifestyle won't get me to where I want to be. So I choose to overcome my natural pattern of being a human and being introverted. And I force myself to be extroverted. I force myself to go out on social events, network with people, prospect, make cold calls, interact with as many people as possible. And then that's why I get up really early in the morning because I get my energy out of being alone. So I get up every single day at 3.55. And I'm alone for, you know, my girlfriend doesn't wake up until seven. So that time I'm alone, I go to the gym, I read, I do my self-development, I'm completely alone. Nobody's really awake at that time, so nobody's bothering me or texting me or calling me. Um, so that's how I get my energy. Some other people get their energy from big crowds, right? Extroverted people. So then that's good. You, you, whatever way you are is okay. As long as you know that if you need to be a certain way to be successful, you're okay with overcoming your core fears and getting to the next level, right? Um, so ask yourself different questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you must choose what is worse, right? So um, number two, right up there. You must choose what is worse. Is it worse for me to, I might be happy staying at the office and not talking to people? And that, that to me is worse than going out there and potentially giving my, myself the opportunity to close a deal and make 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand. What's worse, right? Even though you have to make a phone call in order to make that happen, which is a fear, getting through that is much better than staying at the office and not making any money, right? Um, let's see here. Next page, if you want to scroll down. Uh, there's a, a funeral study. Again, more, more morbid stuff. <laughs> the, average, the average funeral has 100 people show up. Okay? Only 10 out of the 100 cry, and 50% of that show show up depending on the weather. Okay? So that's how much people care. And it, it's true. Ten, that 10%, that's your immediate family, right? That's going to be crying. The rest are just there for moral support, and half of them didn't even show up because it was probably raining that day. I don't want to go to a funeral when it's raining. So the point of telling you that is that the mass public doesn't give a damn about it. They, they don't care. A lot of people in this room, I always preach energy and team and, and, and being a unit together, but you're, you're individually in it for yourself, right? I mean, you, if somebody else across the table from you fails, you're gonna be like, hey, that sucks, but you know, hey, what's for dinner? You know, what's next? You know, you're gonna move on, right? So you have to get clarity on who you're living for. Are you living for the person that's on the other side of that phone call that you're scared to call, right? Or are you living for your family? Are you living for yourself? Are you living for your core values and your goals? Okay. What is uh, what is real estate a uh, success in real estate mean for me and my family? Why are you here? Get clarity on why you chose to get your license, why you chose to join this firm, why you're choosing to change your life this way. Get clarity on that. Right, because a lot of you don't know. A lot of you got your license because you saw Million Dollar Listing on TV and Josh Allman and all those guys slinging deals left and right, making 100 mil a year and being all happy and it seemed easy. So you got your license because you thought you could do the same thing here in Port Royal, right? No, that's not the case. So get clarity on why you're here. If you're here just because you think this is easy, then you're in the wrong room, right? You need to go back to whatever, do something that's aligned with what you actually want to do. Um, once you're clear on your why, we don't focus on the activities at hand, but instead the outcome that we want to achieve. So you don't care that you have to make 100 dials today because you know that you want to achieve your ultimate goal. And if it takes 100 dials, if it takes 200 dials, if it takes 700 dials in a week, you'll still do it, right? Next page. Um, happiness does not equal fulfillment. Again, a lot of just general mindset stuff. Um, I use an example uh, of the alarm going off in the morning, right? So you're happy because you hit the snooze button, you get an extra 15 minutes of sleep. So that's short-term happiness, right? You're sacrificing long-term fulfillment for short-term happiness. They're not one and the same. You know, people like, I wanna be fulfilled, I wanna be happy, they don't, they don't know what they're saying. They just saw it in a quote on Instagram, and that sounds cool. That's why they're reposting it. So that's an example of sacrificing long-term fulfillment over a quick happiness. So the greatest and hardest lesson you're gonna learn in this business is to never, ever listen to your emotions, okay? It's, it's not a hard business, it's not an easy business, 
it's a simple business, it's a numbers business, it's a relationship business when it comes to the other person that you're trying to get a deal closed with, right? There's no emotion in that. There's no, they will dump you if they can get a better deal somewhere else. You guys know that. You guys know that, like, hey, why did you list with somebody else? They gave me 5% instead of six. There's no emotion in that. It's just math, right? They save the percentage point. So, um, scroll down a little bit. Being, uh, being unfulfilled in life, is, there's a gap, right? If you feel unfulfilled, if you have days where you're depressed or you're down on yourself, it's because your potential is up here in the ceiling, but you're operating on the floor. So there's this huge gap on your day-to-day -day activities that's your, that you're feeling depressed because you're not operating at your highest level as you should be operating at. So keep that in mind. If you get down on yourself, if you get rejected, if you're just not having a good day, not having a good week, not having a good month, it's because you're not operating at your highest level. You can always work harder. You can always do things better, okay? How to stay motivated. First, understand that we lose motivation every single day, right? So there's a cool quote by Zig Ziglar that says, motivation does not last, but neither does bathing, so that's why we need it daily, right? So every day, you should be trying to get yourself motivated. The people talk about affirmations, they talk about you know the routines that they do in the morning. I have my own routine. Uh, it's similar to Josh's. He, when he wakes up every morning, uh, as soon as he turns his alarm off, he goes and views his goals and, and his outcomes. I do the same thing. I have my goals on my phone and I keep them in my wallet too, in this little piece of paper that I carry with me every single day. They're right in here. So I carry this every single day. There's two of them, one for my personal life and one for my business life. And I open these every single day and I read them, right? When I'm down on myself, when I'm having a rough day at work, when Ryan's not sending his numbers, instead of yelling at him, oh, he's gone, damn it. Where'd he go? Uh, I, I work these out and I reread them to myself, right? Because it gives me clarity on what it is that I wanted to do every single day and why I'm doing what I'm doing and why I'm struggling to do what I'm doing, just to get past that. Um, so it's the same thing with him. He has his goals written everywhere. He sets up his environment to remind me of his, of his outcomes every single day. So people have vision boards, they have quotes that they keep on their phones. Like my example is I keep it in my wallet, right? And then um, when you get an afternoon burnout, for, the, for those that work in the morning through the afternoon, um, you know, it happens, right? Uh, he re-pulls out his goals, his outcomes, just like I do on my wallet, and re-reads it to himself and re-motivates himself. It seems redundant, it seems like a chore, it seems dumb, right? But you don't, you don't realize that the part of you that's telling you that I don't wanna do that, it sounds stupid, that's your conscious mind telling you that because your conscious mind operates on the level that it wants to do things the easiest and least painful way possible because it does not want you to feel pain. Your subconscious operates entirely unknown to you. You, you have no control over it. That your subconscious controls your heart, controls your bones, controls your cells, things that you have zero control over. That in there also lives a part that when you feed it things like I do every day, like with my wallet quotes and things like that, it feeds my subconscious. I don't realize it short term within my conscious, but long term in my subconscious, it's growing that, reaffirming my goals and reaffirming my habits, which is the most important part, right? So again, that's why I do that. That's why it's a good good thing to, to just reaffirm yourself on a daily basis, right? So the average person sees 25,000 negative things daily, only 2,000 positive. Think about that, 25,000 negative things every single day. And that happens, it can be a short conversation, it can be something on Facebook, it can be uh, you know, bad weather, it's just it's a negative thing versus only 2,000 things that you see positive. So you must intentionally seek possibility out of every single day that you have, every single action that you can take, seek possibility out of it. It's real simple stuff. Another way to increase motivation is taking action, right? What are the main differences between somebody that's successful and somebody that's unsuccessful? The first thing is they have clarity, a successful person, on what they want or what they don't want. And it's impossible to make a right decision if you don't know what you want. You're just guessing. If you don't know what you want, you don't have clarity on what you want, you're just guessing every single day. Um, and then there's a cool quote that I'll just throw out to you guys. It's, success is a collection of right decisions made over and over, compounded over time. Failure is a collection of wrong decisions made over and over again, same thing, compounded over time. So it's not the one McDonald's trip that made you fat, right? It's the seven in a month, along with the sodas, along with not going to the gym. It's a compound of different bad decisions that you made throughout that month that made you gain five pounds, right? Same thing with your real estate business. It's not the one phone call that you didn't make. It's not the one listing that you didn't get. It's not the one client that turned you down. It's all the single days that you decided that because those people turned you down, that you weren't gonna do it again. That compounded, and then you're in a place right now where you don't have any penny deals, and you're running out of money, right? That's why that happens. So again, clarity on what you want, taking action every single day. Um, 
So seeing the importance of your clarity and having your growth model is uh, they're turning their should list into a must list. So people have to-do lists every single day. These are successful people. Um, and unsuccessful people, they might have a to-do list, but they only get through about 25% or 50% of it, right? The successful people make it a must list that they have to accomplish those things every single day in order to be successful. They have reappearing things that happen on a daily basis. That's their must list. It's not a, just a to-do list, okay? Life is hard, business is extremely hard, so set up internal agreements with yourself. One of my internal agreements is no matter how much pressure the, world's delivered, the world delivers to me, I will handle the pressure well as I'm 100% committed to becoming a diamond, right? So you're becoming, the, the pressure forces diamonds, right? That's the, the analogy there. Never allow yourself to be satisfied. Set up goals so big that for, for your life that you'll have to push your entire life to accomplish. So every single day you'll have to be grinding towards this huge ultimate goal, right? Remember earlier when I told you about everybody over um, over analyzes what they can do in a single week, or excuse me, overestimates what they can do in a single week, but underestimates what they can do in an entire year, right? So this aligns with that statement right there. So I have 10 year goals of making Waterfront an empire, right? Of making it and uh, making, making my company have locations in every single coastal city in the United States, right? Well, there's a big body of water, there should be a Waterfront Realty Group. But that's my 10 year goal, right? And if I split that 10 year goal up into one year sprints that are gonna help me get there, like this year is build an awesome mentorship program, build waves by Waterfront. That's one segment of my 10 year plan in my process, right? Next year is a different goal. And I'm, that's why I'm making sure I'm hitting that goal because I know if this year I don't hit the goal of making an awesome mentorship program, making you guys successful, and having a good platform online to deliver the content to you, then I just added another year. So now it's gonna take me 11 years to hit my ultimate goal, right? <clears throat> so again, put clarity on that. Um, oper on operating on your full potential in all aspects of your life that matter to you. Uh, here's a good question. Do you think that you can ever reach a point where you can't be a better father, you can't be a better mother, grandfather, grandmother, contributor to society, entrepreneur, a better boyfriend or a better girlfriend, a better human being, a better friend to your friends? Of course not, right? We don't have finish lines for things like that. So set your goals with no limits. Um, so there's, of course, there's a fine line as a disclaimer at the bottom between uh, being satisfied and learning to be grateful. So again, driven people are always grateful. And we go back to our daily affirmations, your daily gratitude exercise, which I have. I have a journal that I keep, by the way. Uh, some of you guys may choose to do this electronically. Some of you guys may choose to do it on a piece of paper. But do it anyway. Every morning when starting your day and every evening when ending your day, Write out your goals, which we'll talk about in our next session. That'll be on Tuesday. And write out 10 things that you're grateful for and why you're grateful, right? So 10 things seems like a lot. And people are like, well, I usually, I'll do like one or two or three at the most. But 10 forces you to think about things what you're grateful for, right? It's been proven that writing out your daily gratitude forces your brain to create dopamine, which is the brain's reward drug for making us feel good every single morning. So when I do that, when it, 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 dude, it sucks to get up at 3.55 in the morning. I hate it. It's it, awful, but I have to. I have to, right, because I'm, I'm aligned with my goals. And yeah, of course there's days that I sleep in. There's days that I feel like shit and I can't get up at 3.45 or 3.55, right? But I just compensate the next day. I do things a little bit differently just to, again, to hit my goals. So again, getting up so early in the morning, I have to have something that makes me feel better and get me out of my state of like wanting to kill myself or go back to bed. Right, so I, I reread my affirmations, my rewards, my dopamine, and my goals, and the things that I'm thankful for. Okay, and the next slide talks about not doing shallow gratitude, right? Um, what are you grateful for and why? So again, that's why it's 10 things that you're grateful for, not just three, because if I just did one or two, you could say I'm grateful for my wife. Okay, that's great, and I'm, I'm happy that you're grateful for your wife, but more, that's a little shallow if you can go a little deeper, like saying I'm grateful for this computer, it allows me to create opportunities for my family and have a positive impact on many lives that I could never be, have uh, seen before this technology existed, right? So again, it seems a little like intricate and kind of dialed in, but at the same time, you're forcing yourself to be thankful for things that you didn't think to be thankful for, like your computer, right? A lot of people don't have computers. I, I wanna say that 80% of the world probably doesn't have a computer because not every place is like Naples, Florida, the United States where success is, is normal, right? People live on the street, people live in like mud huts in, in, in Africa, and I, I'm sorry, I don't know like a good example to give you there, but <laughs> uh, the point is that you should be thankful for the little things in life every single day, and creating that will, will, will rewire your brain to your ultimate goal and your success and your clarity, right? So there's a couple more examples, like I'm grateful for my alarm clock, I, I definitely am. Uh, the bottom one talks about my wife, so I'm grateful for my wife, 
that made him pack me this amazing lunch so I can provide my body with the necessary nutrients to get necessary energy needed to operate at the level that I do. Again, you don't have to get super detailed like that, but being thankful about things in this thing, 10 things a day is really gonna help you. Almost done here, how are we doing with time, good? Um, this is more or less gonna be your homework for today. Um, and at the end of your packet, after this next, uh, these next two pages, you're gonna see some blank forms that you're gonna have to fill out. So you're gonna complete your lifetime study in case you didn't just now, your growth mode model, which is that GSD mode, your should versus must list, your yearly business plan, which is gonna be included in there, and your daily GSD performance tracker. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. The next week, we're gonna start talking about systems and processes where we're gonna have trackers. And I track, like I was making the joke about Ryan and Alicia earlier, how I make them update their numbers. Those numbers go into a tracker, and I have a tracker that I keep with me. I can access it on my phone or my computer that shows me my business, right? What numbers am I hitting? What numbers am I not hitting? How many agents do we have? How many deals are we closing? How much are we growing or not growing? I check that every single day, probably seven or eight times a day. Um, and you guys will have access to a similar model, which is a tracker for your daily activity and closings, your monthly business financial tracker, and your personal financial tracker, which is just as important. We'll talk about that next session. Okay, and then last but not least, if you need help, like I said earlier, we're here to help. Alicia, myself, Matthew, who, by the way, I'm sorry, is our newest mentor, Matthew Merch, right back there. Glad to um, be here. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Alicia Robin, Ryan Joyner, myself. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed to have an amazing team outside of Waterfront, too. People like Christy and Pete, who are awesome, who devote themselves to making my life easier and your life easier. Brad Bryan, who's always been there since the day I started in real estate. Um, I'm, I'm thankful for those relationships. You should be as well. Those are people that genuinely want to help you with the benefit of all of us thriving and having a good career. Any questions? Anything at all? Comments? Concerns? Everybody good? Good? All right. Well, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Do you uh, Pete, do you guys want to go next, or should we take a break, or what do you think? Uh, we can take a quick break. Okay, cool. Do you guys need to hit the restroom? Mm. Yeah, Kyle, Brad has uh, got called down to the courthouse, so he might be Okay, no problem. Hey Kyle, we cut the feed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can cut it. Okay.